Would you like to see what the Wrangler Star subscribers built during the open house? Come on, I'll take you for a walk. roots and rocks. This was pretty much impassable before. It all starts right here at the house, at the wood pile. The trail goes down to the first bridge, Elderberry Bridge. The first bridge you come to on the trail is the Elderberry Bridge. One thing that happened uh, on our first open house, uh, I noticed that uh, I was unable to manage the amount of people uh, that were um, that had come to help. It was uh, uh, about 40 people or so, and all of the questions and all the needs coming to one person was just too much. I just I, I couldn't uh, effectively manage, and I couldn't effectively uh, keep everyone busy and everyone occupied with something to do. And so when I thought about this year, I knew that the that the size of the crowd was going to be um, even twice as big, I kind of fell back on how uh, the command structure of the wildland firefighting uh, that I've been doing all summer. And that was to divide people up into teams. And so I kind of, what I did was um, I wasn't sure how many people would show up with what tools and such that we had. And so I uh, gathered everyone together and talked to them all about what they had. Did they have a chainsaw? What were their skills? Did they have hand tools? And so basically what we, what I was able to determine is, is the, the amount of resources that we had, the amount of skills. And I took that and I started breaking people up into teams. So what we uh, were able to end up with was two bridge building teams, uh, one sawyer team, and one hand crew team. And I picked team leaders for each one of those. And I went around and I met with each team leader and I made it, uh, I explained to, to the team leaders kind of what we were trying to accomplish, but I didn't micromanage them. I tried to uh, just tell them, this is what I want. This is how about the size that I want it, or this is where I want it to go. And I left it up to them to decide on how to build it. And it was such a great experience because it took a tremendous load off of me. I don't need to, to manage these people or, or try to tell them how to do every step. Up. They're very smart, very creative folks, and they, they came up with solutions that I wouldn't have come up with myself. So part of the deal with the individual teams or their responsibility was to name each uh, bridge, for example. And the hand crew team, they were to name uh, a meadow that will cross up here. So the bridge team, too, uh, built this bridge, and this is the name they chose. So this is the first bridge we come to, and it's wonderful. So as soon as we crossed, crossed the bridge, uh, the hand crew worked up this trail that we had laid out. It heads up the hill here. This is the first area that we cleared on the property. And this is coming along very nicely. The undergrowth is coming back. All the native species, all the native plants are coming back. And it's just it's so encouraging to watch. So right here is our first intersection. You can see right here where the so uh, what we did is I, uh, we walked all of this with the uh, team leaders uh, and determined which way to go. And so they worked together as a crew. We had a hand crew that varied between 12 and 15 people or so. And just like on a, a fire line crew, everyone has a tool. The heavy digging tools like the Pulaski's are always there first, cutting the way, and then we moved into the heavy hose and rakes, and then finishing up with the more fine grading tools. And it's amazing because the first guy uh, doesn't realize he's doing anything, he just takes a stab and a step, stab and a step, and you can go along building trail at an amazing rate. So let's walk the, uh, we'll, we'll veer to the right here, and I'll show you the trail that was built through the forest. So this heads on down. You can see right here what a great job they did. This was a tough area. There's lots of roots and rocks. This was pretty much impassable before when we tried to walk it. It was, or it was really difficult. You had to have boots on and your legs got all scratched up. But it's completely changed everything. So it's nice. This little section rolls down here right to the pond. So this will be, we can use this for skiing and, I, and for ice skating. And it just changes everything. It's amazing how much work these guys and girls were able to do. And it rolls through here, 
And it's hard to put it into perspective for you guys, but uh, there's another intersection right here that goes around the pond. And then this heads up to the boys' cabin. So let's head up there. Here we come to the second intersection right above the pond and the ram pump. And this is a little area that we cut through. This heads up to the boys' cabin where they're working on. And this will lead right to the front door of that. It was just so, so great, all of the special skills and abilities that folks brought to the table that we were able to, to, to use and to, you just, you know, you just never know about people. Sometimes you can sit and talk to someone for 10 minutes, you have no idea uh, that they have this special ability uh, that uh, um, is so impressive. Perfect example, we had a big killer snag, a tree there that I've been worried about cutting for a long time, really a dangerous one. Uh, we had a subscriber that came that had special, uh, a lot of experience with logging and felling, and him and I fell that together. And that was a, just another classic example, and so many things. I couldn't possibly even list them all. So here we come up to the boys' cabin. The boys' cabin, a lot of, uh, a lot of you guys have asked about that. You know, what, are you going to finish that, or what's going on with the boys' cabin? We uh, uh, took a little a summer break off from having the boys come here and intern and mentor with me uh, just because we had so much going on and so many obligations and travel. But now that things are slowing down a bit after the open house, uh, the boys will be coming back on Tuesdays and they're going to get started on this. So this was one kind of a main feature that I wanted to uh, build the trails and the intersection to come to because this will be something that we can have. We want to have a biathlon. That's a competition kind of where you cross country ski and shoot an annual thing uh, when the snow comes and this would be like a warming hut where we can have traditional blueberry soup like uh, they serve in Sweden on the Vassalopet. Vasa Vasa so let's head down. If we take a right, we go to the Rock and Roots Bridge, which is Bridge Team 1's project. I'll take you down there. We take a left here. We go to the um, Soggy Bottom Bridge and we'll just go back and revisit that as well. So this trail has turned out so nice. It's uh, what, what we've been doing is uh, as we go for walks on it in the evening, uh, we just bring a tool with us and just smooth out little areas, little bumpy spots. And, and as it rains and the weather changes, we see that until that, so we get some, uh, some uh, roots that are coming up. And as we just keep working on it and keep chopping those things up as they expose themselves, we'll, uh, we'll have a fantastic really nice buff trail to ski on and I'm excited. If we take a left at the intersection of the boys cabin, we head down the fence line here to the soggy bottom bridge. That's the one that I just finished up uh, before we had the open house. This is uh, the fourth of the bridges we have on the property. So this one here is nearly done. I, I think I might have an episode four as I'll build the, uh, the ramps up to this because their ramps are a little bit abrupt. They it sits up pretty high. But uh, you can see here, we've all seen this before. And this heads on up and ties, on, ties in with the hand cruise trail um, at the first intersection. So we'll go back to the boys' cabin and take a right, and I'll take you down to bridge number one, the big bridge, Rock and Roots Bridge. So as we turn right at the boys' cabin, we'll come down the fence line, and just coming into view around the corner here will be the Rock and Roots Bridge. This bridge is the biggest bridge. Uh, the span is uh, nearly 30 feet and was built by Bridge Team 1. So a nice uh, trail through here, real tough area, lots of rocks and lots of roots. And that's why it was named such, the Rock and Roots Bridge, because it was a real battle, I think, to get, to get it in, a lot of work. Right there in front of us, right there, was the area with the fire. You know, we had difficult putting that out. So nice flow. So as you come down here on your bike or your skis, we'll roll right around. And this bridge is a little bit different. It's unfinished uh, because it's full round logs. So we've got um, plank, a plank bridge, bridge one, and then we got soggy bottom bridge, was, which was split logs. This one is using the full logs. And so it's four feet wide, probably, I'd say probably 25, 26 feet in length, I'm guessing. And these will all be cut. So I'll come along here once I get some big nails and 
then nail all that down, snap a string line, and cut those edges square. So it'll be a nice five foot wide, but a uh, fun, fun bridge. And this is uh, something that was we're really excited about because this was a uh, this is a place where we were always getting our feet wet. So we'll come back from the other side here. Rock and Roots Bridge. A lot of work went into, went into this bridge as well. Ooh, I almost bit it right there. Uh, all of the these all of these logs here are the two big stringers were uh, cut to, with the cross cut saw, and all of the, this decking that you see that this was all provided by the saw team down on the lower pasture, clearing a stand that was really thick and and uh, becoming a problem. Um, some of the guys packed rocks all day uh, for these stringers to buttress these in and, and these cross members all chiseled out by hand and this was quite an undertaking and done very nice. Uh, Sam, uh, kind of Sam the bakers helped with the design and, and I hate to mention names because there were so many people that contributed but to, uh, I could make this video eight hours long, I still could barely scratch the surface but uh, this is a fun bridge and, and a very welcome addition uh, to the homestead that's for sure all right I'll, the last place i'll take you through is the, the trail we cut through the spooky woods and then we'll uh we'll head on it head head back up. we'll head back up to the house so as we cross the rock and roots bridge we come to the fourth intersection here if we hang a right that takes us up to the to the orchard there on the left in the pond where the dam is, we take a left, this takes us into the spooky woods. Why is it called spooky woods? Because it's spooky in here. Here's an area I just cleared. So we are going to try to leave this. Um, Jack has made his promise not to cut all this, these trees out because it's completely a, uh, a canopy. And the further you go in, the darker it gets. So uh, the hand crew came through here and we widened it just a little bit and took out a few of the six that were in the way. But this is a really fun area to come into. It's a real fun area to ski uh, because it's got just enough corners that makes it challenging. The thing with cross country skiing are you don't need very much of a slope to make things really death defying and scary. The smallest little slope is quite challenging on those type of skis. So this is one of the most challenging areas, but it goes down, 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 down to the lower section to the Christmas bridge. So that's about it. We'll, uh, we'll head back up to the house. I know this video is getting long, but I, I just wanted to kind of give you a brief overview of what took place and how it worked. Someone asked me, a couple of people asked me, how long would it take, have taken you to do the work that was accomplished here during the open house? And if I just took the bridges, each bridge would take me about a week to build by myself. The trail, probably three months. So that's, that's how, how much was accomplished, just to give you an idea during the open house and I'm so grateful to all of you who spent your time to come out here. I know I keep saying it but I just can't believe it. I, I talked to Mrs. Wranglestar and I just shake my head. I said I don't understand how people can be so generous. I don't understand why they would want to take time away from their families and their own interests, take vacation time, spend the money it takes to come up here to spend time with our family. I am humbled beyond words and so grateful. Thank you. We'll see you next year. I know you're going to ask. I know you're typing the question as I speak. What are you carrying? What is that tool you're carrying? <laughs> I bet you haven't seen one of these before, huh? Well, that's going to come up. This is the new Rogue Pulaski. And... Well, I think we should probably save it for a future review. We'll see you guys on the next video. Don't forget to click the thumbs up. The proper thing to do is to click a thumbs up on a Wrangler Star video.